What's up? I'm Sergeant Ballistic, but you guys can call me Brian. Thanks for checking out part one of my video editing PC build series. In this video, I'm going to talk about all the parts I chose for my build and talk a little bit about why I chose them. Be sure to check the description below because I'm going to have links to all the parts I talk about in this video. Use these annotations to skip to a part of the video you like and use the table of contents marker to get back here anytime you need to. To start out, I wanted to let you guys know that this has actually been an ongoing process for about a year now. I used to actually only have one PC and that became really problematic when I wanted to be able to like play games while I was rendering and vice versa. Also, editing software takes up a huge amount of space and most games are starting to get that way too. So to solve this, I actually decided to build out a dedicated gaming PC. I'd really like to do a video on that build also, so let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in. I still don't have a name for my video editing rig, so if you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. I try to reply to pretty much every comment you guys leave, whether it's a question or just to say thanks for checking out my video. So housing this build is the Corsair Graphite Series 760T in Arctic White. It's pretty much the start of the show here. It has a nice classy but edgy look to it. The clear side panel is great for showing off internals. It has really flexible disc arrangements and can handle pretty much any type of cooling solution that you can think of. If you haven't seen my unboxing and initial review of this video, go check it out now because I need them views. Not really, but, but really. Go, go watch it, please. But in that video, I go into detail about all of its features and even its flaws. So for the CPU, I went and picked up a second FX8350 to go with the one in the ammo can. I often have Photoshop, Premiere, and After Effects open at the same time, and I've actually started using Audition and Speed Grade as well to try to improve the audio and color correction in my videos. So that, plus the fact that I constantly have at least 50 tabs open in Chrome, necessitates I have a CPU that can really pull its weight in terms of multitasking. So I know the per core performance of the AMD FX chips isn't as good as the Intel offerings, but cost was a huge factor in this build as it often is for me, and the Intel chips that have six cores were about two to two and a half times as expensive and that just wasn't cost effective for me. I've been using the AMD AM3 and AM3 Plus socket chips for a while now and their cost per performance ratio is just tremendous. For the CPU cooler, I'm currently using the Corsair H60 to cool the FX8350. This should be okay for the time being while I'm just using the CPU in turbo mode, but as I get into overclocking the CPU, I'll be picking up something a bit larger to help transfer the additional heat, probably something in the 240 or 280 millimeter range. To go with the AMD FX8350, I chose the ASUS M599FX Revision 2 Pro. This of course uses the 99FX chipset. It's about $50 cheaper than the Sabertooth that I used in the ammo can build. It has a black PCB with blue and white accents that I really like aesthetically. The feature set of the 990FX chipset isn't all that much better than say the 970, so a lot of people say to go with that but I will be doing some overclocking on this machine so I was willing to spend a little bit more in hopes that this motherboard will provide a nice stable platform. I really really like ASUS motherboards. I've never had an issue with quality control or parts being dead on arrival or anything like that and they have a few nice touches like the Q connector. I've got mega huge hands so especially when small form factor builds this can come in quite handy. So I have no complaints about this motherboard so far. It has plenty of fan pins and an adequate number of SATA connectors for what I need at the moment. So the GPU is probably the most wanting component in the build right now, and it's probably gonna be the first thing I go to upgrade. I'm currently using a PowerColor Radeon HD 6850 one gigabyte video card. It's actually able to output to three monitors without much issue, but I would like a newer, more powerful card with more compute power to help with all the Adobe programs I run. The most likely scenario will be the EVGA GTX 770 from the ammo can moving into this when I upgrade that to either a 780 Ti or 900 series card in the near future. For my main drive, I have one 250 gigabyte Samsung Evo 840 SSD to hold my OS and applications. I also have a two terabyte drive where I keep all of my media. I'll soon be upgrading this to a four terabyte drive and possibly setting that up in a RAID configuration with two of those. The last two internal disks I have are one terabyte hard drives, which I use as scratch disks. One is for exports and the second is for cache. 
The fifth and final disc is the two terabyte USB 3.0 Western Digital MyBook that I just used to back up all my project files and media. I've actually done a lot of research into the best setup for an editing rig. If you guys are interested, I can do a more in-depth video on that in the future. I didn't want to go too deep into that in this video, but let me know in the comments below. So like I said, this setup isn't optimal at all. One thing I'd really like to do is set up a NAS slash media server. In the network attached storage, I'm probably looking to set up a nice large array of disks so that I can edit and stream media straight over the network. So stay tuned for that. I do plan on doing some videos on it and I actually have a couple parts hopefully coming in within the next couple of weeks. So RAM for a video editing machine is pretty straightforward. You want pretty much as much as you can get. So right now I'm going with 24 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM with the fastest cast timings I could possibly find. I'm not too big into overclocking RAM or super fast RAM because I haven't personally seen data that shows it being of huge benefits. You often get really, really diminished turns for a huge investment and I just don't think it's worth it right now. For PSU, I chose the Corsair HX750. It comes pretty highly recommended from a lot of reviewers and covers my needs in terms of wattage right now. The black, blue, and white color scheme also goes great with the ASUS motherboard and case. So a lot of people often cheap out on power supplies. That's not to say that there aren't good budget power supplies out there, but for a part that every other component in your build depends on, I've quickly learned that you don't want to do that with your PSU. If you plan on doing any overclocking at all, you especially don't want to skip on your power supply. You want to make sure you get the cleanest power possible for overclocking. And an efficient power supply can help save you money on your power bill in the long run, so spend more on your power supply. So one of the extras I chose to pick up, which isn't really necessary for the build, is a new card reader. I've been using a Kingston USB 2.0 card reader for about the last three years since I picked up my DSLR. And I wanted to check out the new Kingston USB 3.0 reader. So I picked it up from Amazon and I've been quite happy with it so far. So now I know my mechanical drives are definitely gonna be the bottleneck in terms of the file transfer part of my workflow. So even though this build is up and running, I really don't consider it finished. There's pretty much always something you can tweak. As I mentioned before, I do plan on overclocking this rig, so I'll try to get some content out related to that as soon as possible. Also, since showing off its internals is a huge feature of the 760T, I plan on sprucing up the build, maybe with some sleeve power extensions, and I might try to get some LED lights. I've also already mentioned the new GPU and storage plan, so I'll continue to update you guys on this build as I make more and more changes. So what do you guys think of my video editing PC parts list? Am I missing anything in this build? Let me know in the comments. Also leave specs for the editing machine that you use. And let me know about any other content you want to see about this machine or the ammo can. So that's it for part one of my video editing PC build. Stay tuned for the next video where I show you all the work that went into getting the rig put together. Also, I have some nice finished shots and I think you guys are going to like what I'm putting together. So. Definitely stay tuned for that. So please check out the rest of my channel and subscribe if you already haven't. Also share, share, share this video with all your friends and any forums you're a member with. You guys have been doing a really great job of doing that already. Right now I'm floating just below a thousand viewers and I really like to do something to celebrate that milestone with you guys. Maybe like a video tour or a live stream and let me know if there's anything like that you'd like me to do and hopefully we can arrange it. So go ahead and give this video a thumbs up or thumbs down so I know whether you want to see more videos like this in the future. Also, be sure to follow me on your favorite social media site for more frequent updates on all my tech projects and videos. So thanks once again for checking out my video and I'll see you guys next time. play games while I was editing I actually split out my two PC and that became really problematic because I used to actually only have one it has great disk configure it has great disk config so that plus the fact that I stop it ah the music conversation channels the gigabyte Samsung Samsung Samsung? Samsung? Pretty much want as much as you get.
It wasn't recording, no, it's